let's move on to um, the next subject, which is uh, the Church of England having completely lost the plot. Mm. So this week there were two completely insane stories. The first one actually made my stomach churn when I read it, which is this idea of the church in order to meet their net zero target by 2030, they're t considering uh, human uh, human composting. composting. What actually does that mean even? It, well, it's, it's a, it's, a more carbon neutral way of disposing of a body than cremating it. I don't know exactly what Which the process what? is, but one of the processes that's mentioned in the article on this is the use of, <laughs> of water and other things to, to, to basically break, down the, break down the body. But the reason why, so hum, um, human composting in this country is not legal yeah. at the moment. Um, and the other option is this water treatment, but that isn't, that, that there's no law on that, but no, a water company will allow anybody anybody who does this to use the sewage because it's putting human remains in the sewage so anyway the church of england were discussing doing this sort of awful sacrilegious act as far as i'm concerned yeah. in the same week as they've also been discussing um changing the liturgy so that it, it uses gender neutral terms for God. Yeah. So I presume instead of like our father who art in heaven, it would be like our parent who art in heaven or something actually, to that effect. Actually, what would it be actually? <clears throat> if, it, if it can't be our father, it wouldn't be our parent because that again is morally loaded. Mm -hmm. So what would it be? They who art in heaven, hallowed yes. be their name. Yeah. Or you, their could they even say come. you? No, that, sorry, they're, they're gender neutral queen to king. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's complex, well, isn't Ma it? Marcus Walker made a very funny point, which is that we shouldn't be misgendering God because he's been very clear what his pronouns should be and he prefers mm. to be referred to as he, him. Um, First but what? Referred to as he, him. Um, but does, don't you think that, there, that there's at the sort of core of this, obviously the church in many respects has lost the plot, yeah. but the, on the language point, I mean, they are, in the most fundamental sense, they are trying to deconstruct, mm. never mind the liturgy, they're deconstructing the very fabric of church doctrine. I, I, th I, think, and, it's, I think it's more than that. I think, I think what we see, sorry to interrupt, but it, it, I think it's an important point. I think what we're seeing here is religion, the established religion being superseded by a cult. And, and the cult mm -hmm. is overtaking. It's like a cuckoo in the nest, isn't it? So it's, I was going to say, it's like the new religion, the new religion that everybody's buying into, but it's not actually a religion, it's a cult. It's, mm -hmm. it's extreme. And the reason I'm saying this is because I had an experience last week that, that really brought it home to me. We talk about this all the time, don't we? We, we? we make a living out of talking about culture and politics and stuff like that. But every now and again, we, we kind of go into the real world. I went into a, a school last week to do a, a debating matters thing. And, and I'd not been into school for a very long time. I used to take students into school, but now schools are really like indoctrination camps. One of the things I saw was a great big Soviet style mural to, uh, dedicated to BLM. BLM. Really? And another one, um, a, a, again, a big mural dedicated to the NHS. So it's it's this this cult that, that is, is this inculcated. Yes, is, yeah, inculcated into children and then it, it, you just see it taking over. Do you, it is a, do you it is think a that the hu human composting story that, and this has obviously come out of the, the church's synod, the meeting where they discuss church policies and so on, um, and this was raised asking what does the church think about this? The fact that this is on the radar of the church as a potential option that they would privilege net zero over the treatment of the dead, they, even the way that it was referred to was mm. disposing of yeah. a body, that there's something so sacrilegious mm. and defiling about the, the, that way of treating a human being's body mm. after death. Because the church traditionally believes in physical resurrection, mm. which is one of the reasons why lots of Christians don't want to be cremated because they believe that your physical flesh mm. will be resurrected in the end times when, mm. when they, that Christ comes again. So the idea that that you would dispose of a body in this gruesome way, basically sending its sludge into the sewers, 
is is almost i mean it's almost pagan there's there's something about it that is 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 defiling in the deepest sense and it's defiling to church doctrine and it's defiling to the sort of idea of the sanctity of the human being and its body should be treated with respect or the individual it's it's destroying the individual the notion that the individual is important the individual is being subjected to net zero as a target they don't believe it anymore it's as simple as that i mean all of this sort of yeah. all of this comes from just yeah. simply not believing it anymore when you say they've lost the plot uh, i'm not getting at you uh, s- semantically for it, but it, when people say this it sounds not exactly charming but it sounds like uh all crazy people no it what might they actually, like <laughs> well no, no it might it might be actually much more than that they actually don't believe i mean i've always been very very struck by the fact that the church never seems to complain about the fact that uh attendances are so low mm. yeah Everyone else does. They always mm. note it. They never. Sort I of don't complain. remember that coming mm. out of the synod discussions. No. No, Maybe it came never, up, but it wasn't it's recorded. Like they don't on. mind. Mm. You know, it's it's it's, it's almost like they're apol. Well, it's not almost. They are. They're apologetic for Christianity, aren't they? Well, possibly stuff. maybe some of them don't I would actually even believe no i, I don't really really do. all. i mean the fact is it's gone i mean yeah. the church of england is gone in some ways we've got the coronation coming up haven't we mm. in some ways you know that could be pregnant with meaning couldn't it mm. i mean if you were going to really reflect mm-hmm. on the reality of the situation you could say well it's about time maybe when it should no longer be the established church or whatever now the problem is though we've and we've discussed this on this show before that if you disestablish the church you also undermine the monarchy and then the mm. whole constitution the, whole, the, the whole fabric unravels, unravels. Yeah. um but i i well, they're doing a very good job of that themselves aren't mm. they? i it there's something about the church that is I mean, it's so it's so deeply destructive of itself i would be really curious to know like you said mm. i don't whether or not these people actually believe in anything mm. the particular well, I clergy I mean, but i would be curious to to see a survey to ask them certain questions on key the- theological subjects well, to find actually, out actually what the clergy really do believe because it seems that what they believe in is this new ideology yeah, progressive ideology above yeah. and beyond anything yeah. that comes from christian well, doctrine they all, might even be ignorant of all, it. all we have to do on this program at this channel and our viewers is look at the way the church treats calvin robinson you know who is actually a christian and who mm-hmm. thinks mm-hmm. In, in in a fundamentally christian way and and to the established church to the church of england he's he's reprehensible also the other thing is two, two, yeah that's it, two things i'd say um first of all um you know they do not like people like us no you know i, I know that sounds crazy but i mean you know during the brexit uh referendum campaign you know i mean there were cases of people i knew who were religious having to put up with for example um this rampant you know anti-brexit stuff coming out of the church mm-hmm. in, in their local in their sunday services you mm-hmm. know and they they do not like they are they, they are they are left wing they do not like conservative people they do not like people who don't go along with uh, the woke agenda i think that's the case and secondly they absolutely pin their colors to the mask i think when you know, with their behavior during the lockdown yeah and the very thing they should do which is to give spiritual sustenance to people mm. like people used to go in the churches during the blitz in yeah. london mm. right or in any other city for that matter they would go there not because the church was going to give them any more protection than any other building but it, obviously it was a spiritual kind of protection mm. too mm-hmm. um uh, totally they closed them all down mm. they got rid of their uh even song choirs uh, the whole thing mm-hmm. you know so I mean I and think a church that I used to attend continued to do its online midnight mass you can't do mass online mm. but it's online midnight mass at Christmas did that after the pandemic with no good reason whatsoever mm. so there's even this sense of in some places and of course there are many fantastic clergy and many good solid theologians within the church mm. still but there's this sense that amongst some clergy they they view the project of the church Mm. if to call it that they view it as something other than how we would traditionally understand the church Mm. and they don't recognize the meaning of say the importance of physically Mm. receiving communion Mm. they don't recognize that as being something that needs to be done in person within a congregation rather than over the internet it's it's part of our tradition and it's and it's 
I think for them it's a representation of the West that mm. they hate mm. you know and it's like you say yes there will be some wonderful clergy just as there are some wonderful journalists just as there are some wonderful teachers and lecturers but actually the institution itself mm -hmm. is completely and utterly captured so to finish on a, a positive lighter note, note, <laughs> a lighter note Balti Towers is making a comeback yeah. um, and particularly interesting given that the BBC in 2020 got rid of that famous episode with the goose stepping because it apparently had racial slurs in it mm. it was then um, investigated they reinstated the episode but when they reinstated they it they put on an offensive content warning mm. so it, it's interesting that they've now decided to, to do this remake i wonder whether they're going to attempt to tell john cleese what he is and isn't allowed to write well i think it'll be a case of <laughs> don't mention the culture war mm. won't it <laughs> you know, I mean, I <laughs> that would be a very good idea I, if john cleese is watching i can't quite see how this would pan out really can you no. i mean um it was very much of its time I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I never quite got the thing with Forty Towers. Everyone thinks it's oh, I love the, it. the greatest sitcom ever. I never quite got. But, um, you know, what is it without Manuel, for yeah. example? Mm -hmm. you, have, you couldn't have Manuel now because that would be a shocking stereotype of a mm. Spanish waiter, wouldn't it? Mm. I actually don't. It, uh, a friend of this uh, channel, uh, Gareth Roberts, tweeted yeah. today, the writer, the journalist Gareth Roberts, he said, it's they're in talks which means it won't it, that just means there'll be a few big dinners few big lunches lots of conversation and it probably won't happen so i'm 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 skeptical uh, as to whether it yes. will happen but I, i'm i'm with you on that i i can't see how it will how it no. will work i mean i there are some obvious targets that could be extremely funny but they won't touch them with the barge pump. yes exactly so yeah. i i i think yeah. it will be I'm sad to say, I think it'll be a real embarrassment if it. But if no it, if it Sybil, does go no Paulie, no, well, no, no Manuel. They were, they were types mm. that just aren't around mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, you know, the the lady with the you know shampoo. The and general. Set, mm. The general. The you know the, jo the, the two ladies Hicks character. The you know ladies. the very yeah. very sort of uh, no nonsense older um, English woman. Mm. You know, and basically that's even, talky, madam. Yes, exactly. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. Even the uh, the. The establishment itself would mm -hmm. would that does that exist in that way kind of boarding house stroke hotel isn't it well it, the I, whole I mean, structure of society that makes it work yeah, yeah. Does, it just, doesn't just, exist anymore, just isn't so. there and and it, you you know what it's going to be it's going to be a generational thing you know between him and his daughter basically and him not yeah. being able to get along with all of this new yes exactly stuff yes, and, yes yes and yes. i kind of think oh no really yeah. leave it leave it so you're not looking forward to it i, I just I, I i'd be surprised if it happens actually yeah, yeah, i'd be surprised yeah. if it happens would yeah. you watch it you didn't like I the old would, you didn't like it the first time round. yeah no, really no i don't because I, I don't like slapstick mm. and there was a lot oh. of slapstick well in this day, so, mm. i do i don't mean to be a, i don't mean to be a, a, a bore but, um, but no i would watch it to see how it was done but i'm more interested to see him on his new GB News show. Yeah, which I think that's Which is happening. definitely happening. And it is definitely happening. Or at least and it that's, was. That's with Andrew Doyle as well. Andrew Doyle's involved with that in some is way, it? isn't he? I think I think so, yeah. Oh. What I would be really interested in actually, what what, what viewers think of the Faulty Towers thing and, and what, what viewers uh, scenarios that, yeah. that viewers would think would you know for, for Basil Faulty to be involved in new kinds of scenarios. Actually, um, yes, there's one interesting thing actually just before we Go is that this, there was a report came out this week. Someone's done a report on this, um, saying that the British people feel that they are actually laughing less and less. Did you see this? Yes. No, I didn't see. We're it. in a chuckle crisis. Yes. Yeah. They're actually yes, laughing less, and they don't. Who'd know, have thought? Eh? Never. Yeah, they <laughs> they don't know where to actually look if they want to laugh. Yeah. Um, there was this thing about people actually looking at uh, only fools and horses during the pandemic for example that I've, I heard a lot about that mm -hmm. we even had John O'Sullivan on recently of all people talking about that very thing and yeah. loving that but I think it is actually true you don't hear laughter mm. mostly I mean I do you think I though that maybe because I know we have to wrap up but it that maybe that's because people are not spending time together in the way they used to so people are so atomized now that though we do come together and you know social settings that you don't have the same kind of well, free no, I, social it's, it's, atmosphere I that maybe the joy you once has had. been ripped out of life 
Mm-hmm. I, I think, think it's actually that people are frightened of, <laughs> yes, of, of yes, laughing at things yeah, because yeah. people are frightened of being offensive. Yeah. yeah. And and humour, great humour, is supposed to be offensive, isn't it? You're supposed to push the. But people can't envelope. feel safe enough in a social setting to just let themselves go and be funny and yeah. laugh and mm. and this because there's a sort of liberation to. Mm. But anyway, on that note, the joy has been taken out of life, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you, Peter. Thank you, Philip. Thanks, and thank you so much for watching. Please like, su- like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what you think. And we will see you next time on Newspeak. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you. Thank you.